So the lemur can fly? When was that a thing? Did I totally miss that? Like, there's a scene where they, like, it, the lemur grabs the scroll and he just, he grows wings and he flies out. I'm like, when? Did they introduce that? <laughs> that really threw me for a loop. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, sorry if I missed that part. Uh, that was one of the big things that stood out, but, uh, not the biggest thing. Uh, th this episode is the, uh, the water bending scroll. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but yeah, it's just, it's another really good episode. Um, what I'm liking about the ones that affiliate a lot of action in, and good action, uh, as well, is that the climax of these, they solidly build. They, they have good pacing so that when you get to the end, you feel like this is a big climax. They're almost like movie climaxes. And I think to sort of work in all of this character and, and, and this continuing story, and good action and even some morals and legitimate climax at the end, in under 24 minutes, that's really impressive. Um, this episode, you got, um, uh, they come across the, uh, uh, this village where they're, they're, uh, Aang is trying to learn how to waterbend, and, uh, Katara knows a bit about, tries teaching him, totally upstages her, you know, he's very humble about it, she starts to get a little angry, um, and they find this water scroll that she steals from some pirates, which is sort of the half lesson in this, is it okay to steal from someone that already stole it? Uh, my thought is they're going to the North Pole anyway, so if she returns it, it, it that'll be redeemed, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, so, so they get this water scroll, and, and the Fire Nation, uh, in a sense, follows them, kind of by accident. I'm sort of noticing this, like, they're following them almost by accident. <laughs> um, and the, uh, the uncle wants to change course because he's missing this piece, like a game piece, or, or something like that, uh, and he alters the whole course to go and get this one game piece, and I, I don't know about that, unless the game piece plays a bigger role later, I'm not, like, I know the idea behind the uncle, the uncle's very funny in this one, by the way, um, I know the idea behind him is that, you know, the, the prince is very wound up and very angry and, 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 and very anxious, and, is so focused on the prize that he forgets he needs to relax, he needs to breathe, and that, that balances out, because when you get stressed and angry, you get stupid. Um, but altering a whole course <laughs> just for this this one game piece, and I mean, and it being in his sleeve in the end, that that's great. Um, you know, it, just about everything with the humor and the uncle in this is great, but I thought that was kind of odd, like, even for him to alter the whole course uh, to go after it, even if it did lead to finding the Avatar, unless he has some sort of sense that they're not going into yet. I mean, that's sort of the fun of the show, is that it's like, you don't know yet, you don't know this stuff's gonna come in, but, uh, for now that was a little weird, but, of course, they come across the kid and, you know, hi, Jinx and Sue. Um, I, I guess another thing about this episode, I know it's weird to go on and on about stuff that didn't happen, and to like the fact that it didn't happen, but when you realize how often it does happen in other shows and our movies, it's very much appreciated, and that's when, uh, Katara's getting really angry that Aang is so good at water bending, she actually snaps at him, uh, really fast, and he's being nothing but kind, I mean, he's saying, oh, I have such a great teacher, that's why I'm doing so good, and she snaps at him, and he actually, I mean, again, being younger, he gets, like, the quibble lip, like, really? I'm sorry? Like, and she immediately backtracks, which I really like. Again, it's like, okay, here's gonna be the episode. It's gonna be her becoming too obsessed, and she has to find out how she was wrong. And, so, and she gets it right away, for the most part. I, I like the fact that she does sort of take it later and wants to keep learning from it. And I, they capture the frustration of her trying to learn it very well, too, because if um, anyone trying to pick up a new skill, I mean, you know how frustrating it is to try something at first and to just keep failing and failing and failing, and that even though technically you're getting better, but in your mind you're still failing and failing and failing. I thought they showed that pretty well, and they captured her frustration really well. Um, so, and at the very end they're like, what did I learn? That stealing is bad. Unless it's from pirates, ha ha ha. I'm like, you know, what specifically were we trying to learn here? Because <laughs> it's like they come together at the end to... Uh, you know, bend the water and get the ship out, and, and they all sort of help out, uh, you know, and they work together, you know, it's not just her being angry, obviously. Um, but again, it's like, no, no, the lesson was about stealing, I think, so, 
I don't know. Maybe that's kind of the charm, too. It's like it doesn't have to necessarily be hammered in, but uh, it, it was a touch confused on this, but maybe it was just for a fun joke at the end. Um, what else? What else? I, I, I like that things like uh, he, he buys this whistle uh, that just looks like a little whistle that doesn't work, um, but it actually brings... It, it calls to the flying bison. I'm assuming, because the first time he blows it, the flying bison doesn't come. Uh, it only comes the second time. So, yeah, that's my assumption, though. That might be... Unless I'm missing something again, but... Uh, nitpick, nitpick. Um, we, we got pirates in this episode this time, too. We got, like, a... Oh, what the hell was that? Like, a parrot with hands or something. It's spike. It got cool designs. Um, and, uh, you know, and then... The, they're cute. Maybe could have even used a little bit more of them. I, I like the haggling uh, between them. Again, the comedy in this one was really good. Uh, as I mentioned before, particularly with the uncle. Uh, there's one point where, you know, uh, uh, Katara says, this is all my fault, and Aang's like, no, no it isn't, and the uncle's like, yeah, actually it is. <laughs> so, so really good humor. I love him finding the piece in the sleeve, and I love it being thrown over and hitting the other pirate on the head. I mean, little little touches like that are wonderful. And, I, and the last thing I'll say about this, I was talking about the action before, um, and maybe this is because I don't watch kid shows nowadays, so maybe this is like a common thing, I don't know. But when I was growing up, even with the really great, uh, you know, well-written action shows, you know, like X-Men and Batman and stuff like that, uh, the action was very basic. Like, every once in a while, there'd be, like, maybe two or three really cool moves in an action cartoon. Uh, and then the rest was sort of the basic punch, duck, uppercut, you know, kick, massive jump that nobody could do, you know. So, it, that was sort of the basic. And then there'd be, like, two or three really cool moves that, you know, Akio would go, Wow! Awesome! Batman's awesome! Uh, this show, man, the, these fight moves are very much, like, they're, they're well choreographed. It's almost like they have a different division just focusing on what the fight moves are going to be because they're so well planned out. And we've seen that in other forms of animation, like a lot of anime, but again, because they take so much time, usually you'll have some sort of anime show where it's like the focus will mainly be on the action and the rest is really stilted, really still, and the story might be flat or something. It, it's very rare, or you get that thing too, where you get two or three really cool moves, and then the rest are kind of basic. It's very rare that you get such a good balance like this, and uh, that is what I'm seeing more and more, is how well this show is balanced. Uh, you know, even the humor, which I, at first I was sort of, eh, about, it, it, it seems to be getting stronger and stronger to a point where it's like, I'm laughing hard at a lot of these jokes. Like, it's not like, oh, hey, that's funny by kid show standards. No, this is, like, legitimately funny. Um, so, yeah, again, I just love, I love the balance in this show. I love how there's so much attention to detail and, and all these things. And even, uh, one last thing, the prince, uh, when the uncle says he changed the course just to go after this piece, I, I still like the fact the prince will still do it. He could whatever, say, no, screw that order, let's go this way. He still has enough trust in his uncle, even though he doesn't always get what he's talking about or what he's doing, that he will still allow it. Um, so, so I really like that. He, even though it builds that frustration, there is that trust between those two, and I, I think that's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, again, broken record, but it's just another really good episode. Great action, great comedy, still good stuff with the characters, great animation. All that good stuff. So they just, they keep getting better and better. And, uh, just see you at number 10.